Hey everybody, this is Brian. Welcome to episode two of the Community Roundhouse. Hi, and I'm John. We're glad to have you here today. It is great to have you here. Episode one was a huge success. We want to thank Vinny for coming on again, y'all. It turned out great. We had 230 views. We had 50 likes, 73 comments. We know this one's even going to be better. We got a great guest for you today. And of course, Cousin Vinny's back with us. That's right. Cousin Benny decided to join us each month for our live interview. This month is no exception, and we got a fantastic guest, like I said, eh? <laughs> yeah, we sure do, and I think, uh, I think a few people are going to recognize you. And we want to make sure everybody sticks around to the end because we've got a fantastic, fully packed blooper segment, and we're going to roll this show up to close to the time for Sparky to live stream. That's right, so I guess we better get started. Settle in, everybody. Get some popcorn, some coffee. We hope you already did. If you didn't, grab it now. We're going to get rolling. All right, let's get started with some layout photos. Over the last month or so, a couple of people, Jim Tedesco and a couple other people, have been talking about their messy layouts. So Claude from the Cowboy Valley and Timberline Junction decided to let's take a look at his mess. And I tell you what, Claude's got a mess that would make any mom upset. I'm glad his mess is not mine, but I have, I can say I can relate. I have seen a mess like that down here before. I've seen a mess like that on more than one occasion. We also got some photos sent in from Simon. Simon has a layout that contains, first of all, 50 pounds of sculptor mold. Second of all, it's got an exciting project that's coming up on head on it. Uh, Simon is modeling a ski resort area. John, tell us what's ahead for that. Yeah, he's, he's building a, a ski scene with, with a functioning ski lift. And this sits, of course, on top of his 50 pounds of sculptable. Simon actually frequently visits the resort that he's modeling, and we look forward to seeing more in the future. Thank you for sending these in, Simon. I can't wait to see the functioning ski resort. Matter of fact, John, you know, my line stops at a ski resort. Yes, it does. So uh, when you see Simon's, maybe you're going to be building one in N-Scale. I will be trying to build one in N-Scale one day. This week's first look back is something that will probably, I'll never forget. This is about our man, Wilmer. He had a great time the other night in his live stream. John, tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, Wilmer was really having fun in his last live stream. He got uh, two or three guys who were close to their goals for a, for a contest, and he got everybody fired up and got the, these uh, channels over their goals, and their contests are now running. We'll talk a little bit about maybe contests. Now, there's, there's a, a few guys that are waiting to have their contest. Uh, one's James Tedesco. James Tedesco, the last time I looked, had like six more to get, and then he was going to have a contest. The next one is George's Sunbelt. He only needed a couple more. And he's having a contest. Get to him. A contest that's going on right now is Flying Crow. Tom's trains and things last night. Whoa! Nate is having a contest at 300. Sue, Stu's structure is having a contest at 400. And it's not hard to go over and Click that little subscribe button. And while you're there, you might as well hit the bell, too. You know, that's okay. You know, I just bide my time. Sooner or later, you'll come to the dark side. <laughs> and I forgot the most important contest. I still haven't gave away the diorama, which I'm going to put to uh, Valentine's Day. We'll say Valentine's Day. James Tedesco is in here. Let's do it again. James, where are you at, buddy? There you are. James, how many guys do you need to get to your goal for your contest? I know you ain't got many that you need. Let's let's do it. Do 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 He needs four. Four people. James Tedesco needs four people to hit his goal, and he's going to have a contest. Three, three, three now. So that means Dave went and took care of it. 
this is fun. This is almost as fun as having one of them sparky contests. <laughs> he needs two. Michael McCarville says he needs two. We like that. Two. Almost there. 498. You're at 498. You're going to have a contest at five? Ow. Ooh, it's got to be getting close. He hole. Ding, 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 ding. Ho, ho, ho. I can whistle. <laughs> yeah, I can whistle. Not loud. I don't do the. <sighs> nah. That ended with my teeth ended. <laughs> I said Kikosing Bali only needs one now. Hey, we got Kikosing to 501. Whoa, is that awesome? Man, we got to get James over, over the hump. Over the hump. I know you can do it. I can know you can do it. Here, let me, let me, let me do it something here. Here, I got a, I got a gum band. I'll whip you. Whip it good. Come on, we can do it. <laughs> 199. He needs one more, Alex Brockway says. He only needs one more. Go on here. Whip it up. up. <laughs> All right, Thomas Hogan says 200. Yeah! My job is done well tonight. Three guys hit their goals. Way to go, people. Thanks for rallying. I'm sure all these guys are saying thanks. I say congratulations. Yeah, some people do shout outs on their live streams and they talk about guys, how good their channels are. They encourage people to go over there and check them out. This Wilmer guy, he tells people he just gets some subs. Okay, they had a contest coming up. They were close. Wilmer promoted him. We got in everybody in there, and people were checking everybody out. The sub counts went up. We got three contests going in. Not only that, you know what? Wilmer's uh, excitement was contagious. Tell us more about that, John. That's right. Uh, both Sparky and Cousin Vinny uh, must have caught Wilmer's bug because they started doing the same thing and got, what was it, two more guys up to their uh, to their goals? That's right. There's like five contests going on in our community now just because of those three guys and their promotions of everybody else in their live stream, paying it forward. I want to thank Wilmer, Sparky, and Vinny for doing this for everybody, for getting those contests going, for getting those sub counts up. Hey, like Tom says, the Tom's trains and things, why not sub? It's free, right? That's right. Click that like button. It doesn't cost anything either. And leave us a comment. Last time we had 228 views. We're trying for at least 250 this time. Last time we had 50 likes. We want at least 60 this time. You can help us with that. Click that like button right now. And what are we going to try for for comments this time? Well, last time we had 73. So let's go for 100. 100 comments this time, everybody. We need you to leave a comment below. We're going to comment back. We're going to count them all. Don't worry about it. We're looking for 100. We're looking for 60 likes and 250 plus views. So we want to encourage you to share this with the other modeling friends that may not know about this series yet. And it looks like our man Drew Steele was back. He put out a short video of trains running. We want to thank Drew Steele for letting us use this video. John? Drew's always got great videos on his fantastic layout, and this is no exception. It's a lot of fun, and it's great to see uh, videos from Drew again. It's a beautiful layout, everybody. Oh, Drew, Drew does wonderful work.
So we were fortunate enough at the end of Vinny's interview, at the end of episode one, where Vinny suggested that he might come back in the following month and that he wanted to have Sparky. Sparky was kind enough to accept. So here is our live interview with Sparky, y'all. It's a great one. Stick around. Whenever I send a train up, it derails. But whenever it comes down, it's fine. Now it's the down line, so should I worry about it? Well, yeah, you're going to want to go up there sometime. Yeah, I would I would definitely worry about it. Figures. You guys would say that. <laughs> well, now, now's the time to fix it. Well, yeah, it's right on the top, too, so I'll just... I'll end up yeah, you got to fix it right now. Well, I had to pull the track on my Helix like three times. Rewet it and pull it up. That's what I'll do. I'll have to cut this section out and start over on that little bit. It's last piece anyway, so it's not a big deal. But. Are you using uh, I use the uh, uni track or the easy track? No. Just I mean, use a flex track code. Okay. All right. I just want that. Just want to ask. That's all. <laughs> well, the, the easy tracks just so I can have trains running. Got yeah. it. Right. And the other thing is I, like is I find if I lay the easy track down because they got lots of switches and turn radiuses and stuff now. Like everybody's using that cat rail and, and any rail and all that stuff. I just get out the easy track, do my layout the way I want it, switch yep. it as many times as I want. That's draw, you. Yeah, draw That's the, your old brain. <laughs> draw the lines down on the bench work, and I'm good to go for my flex track. So. Yep. Yeah, and you get cool. to see it in full size, not on a computer screen. Hey, one at a time. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead, Brian. Do you... um? Do you secure the, the Bachman Easy Track at all, or do you just leave it lay? No, I just let it lay down. So it's it's not going to move. All right. When are you going to start recording, John? Uh, I'm recording now, so we, oh, okay. we, can, we can get this started. Yeah, I, in case we, we said something good, I didn't want to miss it. <laughs> Well, don't 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 put my my remark back to Sparky at the beginning. Don't put that in there. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I'll, I'll cut that out. Yeah, yeah. yeah we got to keep it G-rated. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Even though it's not for kids under fourteen. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Yeah, hey, uh, Sparky, I got a couple of questions for you. Oh, goody. Uh, yeah. Wait, uh, Benny, Benny, let, let, let's welcome him first. Oh, no, nah, why? We don't need to walk. Everybody knows. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> okay, so how is it with that light on in the back? Do you guys want that off? Or? Hey, no, man. I can see the layout. I can see the helix. Yeah, it looks yeah. fine. All right, then. Are you? <laughs> All right. What? All right, well, I guess we should uh, welcome tonight's uh, special guest. Uh, you guys probably recognize this guy. Uh <laughs> So, so I won't bother saying his name. Uh, Sparky, it's great to have you here. Uh, we really appreciate you, you stopping in today. Yeah, it's nice to be here. Sit and talk with you guys for a little bit. Anyway, so. Good. Good. Welcome, little yeah. brother. Yeah, I'm taller than you. I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> well, Brian and I figured we could just sit back and let you two guys go at it, and that would make for the for the entire show. <laughs> No, we, we, we get to do that once a year. That's fine. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, we just, figured the bloopers would be covered easy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Sparky, we were super excited when Vinny suggested that he we invite you on for this month. He he told us, first of all, that he was interested in, in working with us a little bit, which got us real excited. And then we actually weren't sold on using him until he said he was going to bring you in this month. That was the selling point for us. <laughs> My bargaining chip. <laughs> right. he, he used you as the trump card, Sparky. But it's good to have you here, bud. Oh, thanks. But you didn't need Benny to get me on here. You just had to ask. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's a pleasure to have both of you on, to be honest with you. You see, I thought all the time I thought he loved me. Oh, it's just the Honey Nut Cheerios I like. <laughs> <laughs> Vinny can't cook. Yeah, he does a pretty good job of that when I'm down there, too. So. <laughs> I can say that about you. It's, it's really developed into uh, quite a few real friendships, like... I'm wearing the TSG shirt right now too, and that's another great friend that I've made through YouTube, John, from TSG Multimedia, and, and 
it's just the one thing that I really find amazing about YouTube is when I started, it was nothing more than watching videos. But once you get into it and the community and talking to people, it really makes you want to reach out for more and actually meet the people also and get to know them as individuals and people. Like, this isn't just model train videos that we all sit and watch or anything else. We develop a lot of friendships under this. So. Yeah, that, that uh, something that, that caught my attention too is I, I started my channel just to, to keep track of my layout. And I never really expected to make make friends with people, but that happens. It happens. I mean, I have I have gained so many good friends. I mean, Sparky, Roy Hardwick, uh, Marty from Eminem Short Lines. I mean, there's a bunch of guys that've been to my house that I have personal relationships with, and it's a great community. It is. Well, I remember when all you guys were at Vinny's house and y'all went live. And John and I were on Google Hangouts messaging like, man, that'd be fun. We were so jealous we weren't there. You know, it's like, ah. And uh, I, I remember vividly when y'all came on that surprise one before y'all went to Chili's. It, isn't that where y'all were going to Chili's that night yeah. or something? Uh -huh. Y'all did yeah. one. Um, but that, no, not the one with the contest, the one maybe right before that or whatever. But anyway, we were messaging back and forth. We were super jealous that we weren't able to be there with y'all. It looked so much fun. <laughs> it was fun. I mean, I think you remember when we had nine guys here, Sparky? Do we have nine people here? Yeah, at the one point we did, yeah. <laughs> I mean, my house was not that big, and nine people in my living room was crowded. <laughs> <laughs> it was a lot of fun. Well, I not at anybody's mouth at one time, so especially me. <laughs> well, I can only imagine the dinner conversation when y'all went out. That just has to be fantastic in itself. We actually, we actually needed an intercom to talk to each other because the table was so long. <laughs> <laughs> there was what? There was sixteen people there because we had met up with uh, a couple of my friends that live here in Arizona. Ryan is a young kid, and his friend. Uh, we met up with them, and then uh, uh, Sparky brought down uh, his wife's girlfriend or friend with her son. I mean, there were 16 people at this table. <laughs> wow. Wow. Well, Chili's must have loved you guys that night. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that's a good step for them anyway, so. <laughs> well, speaking of get-togethers, didn't you want to talk with him about, uh, what is it? Strat Strasburg. 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 Are you speaking Any with me? Yes, sir. Oh, okay. Now you want me to ask questions, huh? <laughs> yeah, well, we, yeah, it's a beautiful time. We can move into that now. <laughs> right, just a few questions there, Sparky, all about Strasburg. Uh, are you excited to be going there? Well, of course I am. I just, it's it's a lot bigger than it was last year, as far as I know, like, by the sign-up anyway. Should be a lot of fun. Uh, how many people are you expecting to be there? Uh, right now, I think I've got about 83 people signed up. Awesome. So oh, we still got a few months to go, too. Yeah. It's just the end of the well, the beginning of February now. So. Well, think about it. One month is already gone. Three? Four months left. Yeah. And I haven't actually posted a real video out there yet saying, hey, guys, this is Strasbourg. This is what we're doing. This is kind of the timeline. I'll probably get on that by the end of February. But there's a lot of bigger names coming this year, too. So. Okay. Um, while you're there, what are you planning for for a, a entertainment type deal? Well, the first night, May fifteenth, that's just kind of the informal. Everybody's going to meet at the Red Caboose Hall or the hotel, and it's a really in, informal. Everybody just kind of walks past each other, and you go, um, "I know that person from somewhere." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's how I'm going to be. I'm going to say, "Oh, I know that guy. Who is that guy?" <laughs> So, and, and a lot of people are staying in different hotels and stuff too. I'm pretty sure I'm going to call the Red Caboose and say, listen, it's going to be a big meetup. Hopefully, I can get a bonfire going that night and we can all just kind of hang out and everything too. So, and they do have the restaurant and, and stuff like that. So, are you going to plan any kind of uh, train rides or anything like that? Is anything like that available? On May 16th, I've already bought the tickets. I've got three tickets for the 11 o'clock in the morning train rides. So. And I bought all the tickets just for the simple reason that make sure that we're going to all be together. Uh, I could have just said, listen, if you guys want to hit the 11 o'clock train, you guys can buy your tickets. But then we run the risk of, like, it's the Thomas weekend, too. So we run a risk of, like, other people getting on the same cars. Uh, that's it. 
I remember the first class parlor cars. Um, so that's actually really, really good. One's got a bar in it. So I <laughs> how long of a train ride is it? What was that, John? How long of a train ride is it? I think it's about half an hour, but I'm not completely sure on it. Okay. Other people, it's 45 minutes. So. Okay. How long are you staying? Yeah, uh, where are you staying? Well, I'm staying at the Red Caboose. This, uh, me being from Canada, it's an eight hour drive for me to get there. And uh, I might as well spend the money and make it something that I'm going to remember forever, right? And I'm, instead of staying at a holiday inn, I can do that anywhere. Right. Uh, mm. You get one chance to stay basically at Red Caboose Hotel. So. Sure. Well, I want to personally thank you for you twisted my arm to come along. Wow, you're one of the big names coming along, and <laughs> it's it, it kind of hurts things a little bit. But a lot of people have said I'm only coming because Penny's showing up. So. <laughs> I have heard that. <laughs> oh yeah, there's going to be a lot of people looking to talk to you, Vinny. You're going to be there, right, John? Oh yeah, I'm going to be there. I wish we can. I uh, wish we can get Brian up there. That would be cool. I'm, well, I'm I'm thinking about next year, and it's funny you mention that because I remember a year ago about this time you were promoting Steamtown, Sparky, yep. and there were a lot of people going for that. And I remember thinking, I cannot believe all these guys are going to go meet each other. They're going to spend all this money and go meet up with each other and stuff. They know each other from YouTube, and it makes more sense now a year later. You know what I mean? It's taken a while to understand how, like what you were talking about earlier, the community stuff. Yep. And because I didn't have, I was yeah. just couldn't understand. I couldn't fathom spending money to go meet up. And then, but now it totally makes sense. And next year, I'm hoping to be able to go myself. Well, well I want to highlight that. Go ahead, Sparks. Oh, sorry, guys. Go ahead. I was just saying one of the highlights of last year was going to the Hudson Model Railroad Club and they opened that up exclusively just for the group and it was free of charge you come you can throw some money in the donation or, or pot or whatever I think we nice. raised over $500 for them just going to see but wow. it, it's just to bring the community together at such a social event that's just been opened up by so many other people. All right, well, I'm done with my questions. You know, Brian, we could have just sat back and let Sparky and Vinny go at it, and that would have made up the whole show for us. And, you know, for the most part, we did, but we had to put our two cents in where we could. Yeah, well, we, we didn't want them changing the name of the show on us. No, we didn't want them changing the name of the show on us. That's for sure. I don't know. What would they name it? The Sparky and Vinny Show. The Sparky and Vinny. It sounds like Lenny and Squiggy. <laughs> that wouldn't make us Laverne and Shirley, would it? I hope not. <laughs> All right, everybody. We're taking a break from the interview with Sparky because we want to talk about this Where's Jerry thing. All right. I found Jerry on my construction site, on my layout. Let me show you some photos right here, right now. Another shout out goes to Andy Weldon. Andy's been doing a good job. I'm glad you're back, Andy, and getting get rid of your channel because you have some good stuff too. Hey, go over and subscribe to Andy. Help him out. And another shout out, Rick Bailey. Go check Rick's stuff out. Rick's been doing some good stuff. Uh, layout wise and he's got some good <laughs> that was bad Jerry bleeper and I mentioned last month during uh, community roundhouse that I've seen I've seen tire tracks along along my uh, my rail lines I still haven't caught Jerry but here's those tire tracks and they gotta be him You know what? I heard Jerry's been in Pittsburgh, too. Yeah, you know, we got uh, a clip here from from Dale PRR guy Bass. Seems like he called Jerry again on his layout. Cousin Vinny's Kachina. 
Cousin Benny's kitchen. The taste of Italy. Look at there. Jerry Dunn beat us to it. Conveniently located at 6951 Railroad Avenue. Directly next to the depot. They say it's the best lasagna around. Jerry's in Pittsburgh eating lasagna at Vinny's place. And from what Dale says, it's the best lasagna around. And so what it sounds like is he's in Schuylkill River Valley this week. He's in Pittsburgh this week. And he's in Winter Park, Colorado. How does Jerry pay for all this gas? Here, just take a look at this map and see how widespread he is in just a week. It could be he got all the gas from Vinny's lasagna. <laughs> Don't let Vinny hear you say that. <laughs> but... You know, you know, Brian, uh, Jerry gets around, but he's not the only one. You know, that Roy H. guy likes to travel, too. He's He drives coast to coast, so he's got to be showing up on people's lands. You had an idea for getting a hold of him somehow, didn't you? I, I think we should uh, I think we should be tracking him the, the same way we're tracking Jerry. And what would we do? What would we call that? We can call this Catch the Container Man. Catch the container, man. Look for Roy on your layout. Send us photos of him. We can't leave him out. He travels more than Jerry. Yeah, and, and he could be on your on your highways. He could be sitting in your parking lots. Or maybe if you got a, a Taco Bell, that would be a good place to look. So each month we want to have a segment where we try to catch Container Man and we find where Jerry is, okay? So don't forget, everybody, search your layouts high and low for these guys. Tire tracks, 18-wheelers, trucks, etc. Anywhere these guys could be hiding, look for them. Catch a picture and send them to us on the uh, Community Roundhouse site, okay? We're going to have a link below and the, a link in the description below. Click that link. Then you go to the community roundhouse site, y'all, and all you got to do is click one more button and upload a picture to us. And we'll bring it, bring these pictures to you next month, next month, and let's track these guys. Let's see where they go. Yeah, we were scared Jerry was getting lonely, so we're going to catch Container Man and find Jerry. Where's Jerry every month and catch Container Man? Model Railer's got some big plans for his layout coming up, and he sent us in a video for what's coming. Let's go over and take a look. Yeah, each week we do a what's coming, and Model Railer learned of that, and he sent us a video. He's got a he's got a fast track six by nine three piece modular O gauge. He's fixing to take down to his basement. He's going to do ops with his kids on it. Check this out, everybody. Three, two, one. Yo, what's up everybody? What's going on? So check it out. If it's your first time here, then I want to thank you so much for checking out the Community Roundhouse. This is a great freaking show. I asked if I could do a little video to promote me and they were cool with it. So here it is. This right here is all the fast track track that I just got for, that's right. I'm building a no scale layout. This is a three part modular layout I'm gonna be making with my kids. Right now I'm doing the track planning and now I'm gonna be doing the bench work and then, <coughs> excuse me, and then we're gonna take it down into the basement where it's a little warmer cause it's cold out here. And we're gonna do run sessions. We're gonna do scenery work and I'm going to be doing operations on this. It's a little loop. You guys can't even see it. It's a little loop here. It's, uh, <laughs> it's nine foot by, yeah, it's, it's nine foot. It's, it's a six by nine, okay? Man, it's a six by nine layout, three part modular. Bench works free because I bought it a long time ago. It's two by fours. I know it's going to be heavy, but it's open grid and I'm doing the cookie cutter style uh, sub road bed. So make it a little lighter with uh, one inch foam. All right. So please go check out model railer on YouTube. That's me. If you haven't known who I am, please. Go hit my subscribe button, all right? 
And I want to give a huge thank you to you guys at the Community Roundhouse for letting me put out this video. Um, I just watched the one, the first one with uh, Vinny, and it's a good one. I like it. I like how they set it up. They got everything down on the bottom of what's going on in the railroad community. So it's freaking cool. I just want to thank you guys and <clears throat> everything else. All right. <laughs> Later. You know, Brian, I love a no-scale layout. I, that's how I started at my father's side while he was building his layout. So John and, and his kids have a great start. I tell you what, I'm an in-scale loyalist, but this John guy, this model railer guy, he seems awesome. I'm going to be checking this O-scale out. I'm going to see what happens. He's got big plans for scenery from what he says. He's also got another segment in our show this month. He's a big guy. John is a, John's a high-energy guy, and he's a lot of fun. So like we said, this model railer guy, this John guy, he's got another part in our show this month that's going to come up after the second part of our interview with Sparky. We're glad you stuck around for that. Stick around for part two of the interview for Sparky with the bloopers coming after that next. Well, when we were talking yesterday, Sparky, you mentioned, you know, the, the two helixes and the one being like 24 inches tall and the other 18. Yeah, well, it's, it's the same helix. It's going to be three helixes in one. Okay. So one spot's going to have, have all the helixes in it. First, the second level is 24 inches. And the second to the third level is 18 inches. And then from the third all the way back down to the first level. So. Wow. So that, that's 42 inches between wait, the wait, first and third. What you see behind me is going to be a turnaround loop. Okay. What is your grade? Sure, if you can do all that math. I'm, I don't know how to calculate the grade. I'm going to say 2%. But that's just a, what I want it to be. I guess. <laughs> one inch, one inch rise in four feet is two percent. Well, it's twenty-eight inch radius, and I go up four inches each time I go around. Four inches. So okay. And you've got and what, you've got, uh, what seven. What I did with you. Well, one at a time, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. You got you got what seven levels on it. There, I think, going to be seven levels for the first one. Uh oh, John's figuring out. <laughs> he did the math on mine before I started, and I appreciated him for that because I couldn't have figured it out. Yeah. Because I, you know, you're turning and, and all that mess. I was like, nah. <laughs> we threw that at well, I really, Peter's, I called him. Uh, Peter's helping me out. I, I'm <laughs> getting like, uh, like three and a half percent grade. Hey, now. Shh. Two <laughs> percent. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Two percent. Sorry about that. Just double up and triple up on your locomotives. That's all. <laughs> That's the fun of it, right there. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Don't worry, I'll, I'll cut that part out, Sparky. Yeah. I think so. <laughs> you don't want anybody knowing that. Uh. -uh. I like to pull about 40, 50 cars. So if that's the case, I might need a helper pocket down here at the bottom. Yeah. <laughs> Especially if your grade is what, what we calculated to be, you probably don't have to have quite a few helpers <laughs> to pull it, to pull 50 cars. I mean, that's, that's a lot of weight on there. Yeah, it's going to be. So it's going to be trial yeah, and error, course, right? Just course. like building the helix. What line do you model, Sparky? It's Conrail Canadian Division. So when, when Conrail consolidated everything, they had one line that ran through southwestern Ontario. And it was from New York to Chicago. And that's what I want to model is the line that actually goes through Ontario. And one of their main hubs was in St. Thomas. They had like main offices, main shops, main engine facility, car shop. In the 80s, it was a huge, huge. Is, is that near you? That's about an hour's drive. Okay. What kind of landscape you got to model in that area that you're doing? Anything from flat farmlands. They can do a few smaller towns. There's not big cities in it by any means. So, but I can go from now, Oil Springs with, with, all the way to Heinz Ketchup Factory. So you get tomatoes and then ship out ketchup. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> cool. cool. 
before we went, I did want to know what Sparky has left to do in regard to complete the shed. Like that, you said you had to work on the ceiling still. You had some other things you needed to do. Well, I got to trim the door and the windows yet, pretty much. So that's about it. Outside's completed. Are, are you right. leaving the ceiling open like that? Yeah, I think I'm like, just because of the storage space that I've got up there. Okay. Exactly. So, thinking about doing is getting different flags like Canada and the U.S. I've got a British one already and draping those over where it's open right top here and that'll kind of close it up a little bit but are you going to do uh, live streams in the shed Sparky? But now all my lives will be out here in the shed from now on so I don't even have a camera in the house anymore so. good good yeah, I watched all the, uh, the videos today with uh, you cutting and all that stuff at the beginning um, that was that was cool. I, it was kind of uh, I, I was thinking Sparky has a lot of guts, you know, to do all that cutting and all that stuff live. I say that for the easy stuff. <laughs> What's well, your next video we got coming out, Sparky? Well, hopefully it's going to be of the Helix. I just got to start videoing it because I haven't had the cameras out while I'm building it yet. But try to piece together how you get started in a Helix and then putting it together. Some of the pros and cons of of a helix, I guess, and, and the hard parts to me is the track work itself. Yeah. Well, there's a like lot in, of track work. Is in it's, it's pretty easy and, and things are just kind of dilly dilly, right? But when you start doing an actual helix and you know the track perfect, I think overthink it, overdo it, and, and try to make it to the point where it's perfect, to the point where you flaw it up. So, Sure. Boy, that can happen. But it is it is good you're doing it one level at a time. There are people who build the whole thing and then lay the flex on there. And I can't imagine doing that. <laughs> I, don't, I don't understand how somebody can do that. I mean, that's got to be the hardest thing in the world to do. And, I, and I you're right, Graham. I've seen somebody do it that way. Build the whole helix and then start laying track. It's like, how do you get in there to lay the track? How do you know, how do you know it's in line? And I'm not going to do it. No, sir. I'm not that good. Well, it, I mean, because, you know, soldering with the other level above you, I can't imagine that in end scale, you know, um, particularly because I'm not a great solderer. But that was one of the things that was great that I did mine in a modular fashion. I could pick mine up and spin it so I could get all the way around it. And, yep. and I didn't have to level up on top. So since I'm not a good solderer, I really could get in there and make sure that my solders are right. And then I'd test it, and I only had to pull up the track about three times. <laughs> <laughs> only. <laughs> What's that? How are you putting your your uh, when you when you're building your helix? How do you how are you joining your track on the curve? Because it's all curved, right? Yeah. You, I'm just laying it out on the cork and sock each piece, and then I'll bend it into shape. Then move on to the next piece. Oh, so do you do you do it straight first and then bend it? I I've got a template that'll bend it in do a twenty eight radius. Okay. So I'll do that first and then offset my joints and I'll put it together. You still gotta mess around with it a little bit. Start of the joints, let that cool down a little bit, clean them up and then I'll shape it to exactly what i want then that was, that's how i did mine i did mine with the staggered joints and i did it on a straight did the staggered joints and then i then i bent it around and and you get a perfect perfect solder joint and no derailments no kinks no nothing and i learned that from greg fish films that's yeah. what i learned that from and that works really good when i was building my helix that's how i did it i did it about oops about that much overlap oh uh stagger on the, on the joint and when you bend it it just bends so nice it's perfect right um Vinny, in in scale how do you do that without pulling your rail out of the ties too many ties and getting it out of gauge uh i have not had a problem of it getting out of gauge and i watched i did watch jeff's uh video yesterday on how he does it uh he he's got a really good idea the way he did it um I I have not had any problems with it going out of gauge. I have using my I've been using my helix now for four years, and I have problems in 
in the layout every place else but in the helix. The helix <laughs> every time. Really, seriously, any, any straight track that I drive, I'll have a derailment, but on my helix, it runs fair. And Sparky can tell you, he's he's been at my house. Sparky, did you have anything else to say before we uh, let you go? Well, with the Strasburg trip, there's also the Railroad Museum of Pennsylvania. National Toy Train Museum is also there. And the Choo Choo Bar. So it's not just a trip to Strasburg, take a ride on the train, meet up with your guys. It's it's a weekend long trip. Plus, like everybody said, Thomas is there too. But there's four other places that you can go to kind of hang out. So I'm really, personally, I'm looking forward to the Pennsylvania Railroad Museum just because they got an old Conrail unit in there. So. Okay, sure. I've never been there, but I've, I've known people who have it, and, and you could spend a day in the in the museum alone. Yeah. <laughs> well, unfortunately, the only way I could be there on Saturday yeah. morning to meet up with the group. Last I was, heard, the museum is my donation. What's that? Sparky? Sparky. <laughs> Yeah, like I, like I was saying, the only way that I could be there for Saturday morning was to be there Friday night. <laughs> because the airlines there would have got me there like at 1 and one thirty in the afternoon, and that would have been like everything's right. over. Yeah, you're <laughs> you don't know? miss too much. So that's why I'm, I'm coming in on Friday afternoon, and I'm leaving us on Monday morning, actually. Oh, okay. You'll be, able to, you'll be able to relax better that way, too. You won't be all so go, go, go. Yeah, exactly, more fun. exactly. You know, and, I, and I didn't know exactly what was going to be happening on Sunday, so I didn't want to leave because the, the flight would have been like at 12 o'clock on Sunday, which means I had to be at the airport by 10 o'clock, and if there was anything happening on Sunday, I would miss that, too. Sure. So I think I'd fly in on Friday and fly out on Monday. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, this, this Sunday is just a... Uh, I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. People might eat for breakfast. Wow, okay. All right, well, Sparky, we really appreciate you being here today. Uh, unless anybody else has anything for him, I guess we can... Uh, oh, I'm, I'm good. All right. I just want to thank you for get, coming on today too, Sparky. And like I said, from the minute you announced that you were going to build the shed, I was excited about what's going to go in there. And I'm excited to see what's to come and all your, you're going to have a great place to have multiple cams going and all that cool stuff. I look forward to seeing what's coming up with your channel. And yep. we do appreciate you coming on and, and sharing your time with us today, bud. Talk with you guys for a little bit and the glue. And the glue is drying, so. <laughs> right. Let me oh, watch the glue dry. I can talk to you guys. Yeah, so you kill two birds with one stone. <laughs> well, we know it's, it's Wednesday evening, and we know that Sparky's got his show to do. Oh, so first comes first. I'm going to say goodbye to Sparky right now. It was great having you here, buddy. Yep. Yeah, it was, Sparky. It was great, great to, to sit right, and talk to you. <laughs> Oh, and I look forward. I look forward to seeing all three of y'all on Sparky Street. <laughs> yeah, I'll be there. I'm I'll always there. there. I'll be there. All right. <laughs> all right, guys. Well, take it Thank easy, you, Sparky. Buddy. Thanks, Sparky. Take care, Appreciate man. It. All right, see you guys. Take care, buddy. Bye. Uh, we want to thank Sparky for being here tonight. This was uh, it was a lot of fun getting to talk to Sparky, and we're glad to have him. We appreciate you, Sparky. Yeah, Sparky's a super busy guy. He's a workhorse in our model railroad community. He keeps the model railroad community tight. He takes us on trips. He's setting up Strasburg right now. He had Steamtown last year, and he was kind enough to take the time out to sit down and do a test with us and then film the interview. We want to thank you for joining us, Sparky. We appreciate you supporting us and supporting the project. All right, for tonight's bloopers, John Model Railer is going to start us off. What's in the box? Three, two, one. What's in the box? This is all the other rest of the pieces of track. I got a 10 inch track. I got a couple of the five inchers. Uh, one and, what's this, three eighths? 1.75, I think, one, right? Or this is one and one eighth. Where is? Man, 
This is a freaking blooper. Ha <laughs> ha! Yeah! Is that considered a blooper? I guess, because I don't know what the freak this is. But anyway, yo, check it out. What is your name of your show? Community Roundhouse. This is freaking awesome. I love this show. This is the a new show. I'm just going off. Yo, what's up, everybody? What's going on? So check it out. If it's your first time here, then I want to thank you so much for checking out the Community Rail House and, right, Roundhouse, not Braille House. There's another blooper. Yo, what's up, everybody? What's going on? I got a shadow here. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Three, two, one. What? Hey, let me stand this way. Does this make sense? This makes sense. This guy's a funny guy. I tell you what, he's funny when he's not making bloopers. Then he sends in these bloopers. I tell you what, we appreciate you, John, for supporting the channel. We appreciate you showing up and showing us that you're not scared to make a mistake. We want everybody to know, y'all, look, these guys can do it. Y'all can do it. Send us your bloopers just like John. Go ahead, John. Let's roll these. Coming up next, we got uh, Mark from m and Rails. If you guys have seen his channel, you know that he's all about production value. Mark produces a fantastic video. He uses scripts. He runs through them great. He makes sure he hits his bullet points all the time. And just like anybody else, he makes mistakes. And just like us, he ain't scared to show them to you. We want to appreciate you, Mark, for sending these in and showing us that you are a human, that you make mistakes, and helping to encourage everybody else to send in theirs as well. Stick around, y'all. They're funny. They're coming up right this second. A-E-I-O-U. A-E-I-O-U. Sometimes Y. Happy New Year and Happy Holidays! Happy New Year and Happy Holidays! <sighs> happy New Year and Happy Holidays! Welcome to my new video series, Show and Tell. But, before I do that, I want to make sure that my local shed is nice and secure. If you remember... Sucky dude. The horn and bell work, so let's turn the lights off and check the lights. Lights off to the lights. Let's dim things. Let's dim things, yeah. The horn and bell work, so let's dim things and check the lights. Speaking of the community, speaking of the community, I want to thank you. Speaking of the community, Eminem Rails, there are a lot of videos out there about how turnouts work. I will also show you what else I got for Christmas, and I will also show you what else I got for Christmas, and I'll give you a, um... yeah, I painted the inside of the local, sh yeah, I painted the inside of the shed black. Will, also known as South East Relvin, South East Relvin. I brought this to the, What I used to do is snip ties completely off and then just add them later by slipping them. Slipping them? Good God. <laughs> now I use this trick. I only cut the tip clies. Oh my God. Breathe much? One last step. I want to be able to turn the light on and off. So I plugged in an auxiliary. Auxiliary, auxiliary. So if you haven't already, check out Brian's channel, DNR. And the last P, purpose, is definitely fulfilled, especially with his new series, Community Roundhouse, that he started up with John from Skull Kill River Valley. John from Skull Kill River Valley. I look forward to their blooper segment. Well, it seems that even Mark's bloopers are high production value. Well, for the last uh, two months, we've been picking on Jerry a little bit, but he did send us in a blooper. The Nearly Historical Railroad. Another shout out goes to Andy Wellman. Andy's been doing a good job. I'm glad you're back, Andy, and didn't get rid of your channel because you have some good stuff too. Hey, go over and subscribe to Andy. Help him out. 
And another shout out, Rick Bailey. Go check Rick's stuff out. Rick's been doing some good stuff uh, layout wise, and he's got some good. Sh good. That was bad, Jerry. Bleeper. And I tell you what, I thought I heard him say a bad word when I caught him sneaking around my construction site. Well, this might be the proof you need, Brian. I tell you what, he's a great guy. He shoots a great video. I love his series, his questions from the truck. Jerry, if I was sitting in that cold truck, I might say a bad word too. <laughs> We'd like to thank everybody who contributed to this month's community roundhouse. We had uh, Dale catching Jerry on his on his layout. We've got Claude showing us that as meticulous a modeler he, as he is, even his layout room gets messy. We've we've got uh, John model railer showing us some interesting plans for coming on his layout and a few bloopers. And of course, we got Sparky. We can't forget to thank Sparky. We really appreciate you guys. And like I said before, this show wouldn't be possible without you. That's right. We want to thank Claude for sending in his layout photos and showing us that he's not scared to show us his dirty layout room. We want to thank Simon for sending in his layout photos as well. I want to thank Drew and Wilmer for allowing us to use their videos for our look backs. I want to thank Sparky for uh, coming in and doing the live interview for taking the time out to support our project. I want to thank Benny again for help coming back with us this month and for agreeing to come back with us next month as well. It's great to have him involved. I also want to thank Model Railer for his bloopers and his look ahead at his O gauge layout. We also want to thank Jerry for allowing us to pick on him. Roy H. didn't give us permission to pick on him, but thank you for letting us pick on you as well, Roy H. We're going to be catching Container Man from now on. I would also be amiss if we didn't thank Dale for finding Jerry for us as well, and thank Jerry for his bloopers. And especially Jerry and Roy, we, we appreciate you guys being good sports. You're uh, younger than me and bigger and stronger than I am, so I'm I'm really glad you're not taking offense to this. And y'all, this week's upload, the second episode of the Community Roundhouse was on my channel. But next month on March 11th is going to be over on Benny's channel. It's on March 11th at 6 p.m. It's going to be, be a premiere over on BNSF 6951's channel. The month after that, it'll be on John's channel again, and we'll continue to flip flop back and forth. Okay, we want to thank you for joining us today. We appreciate everybody for coming in to chat. If you know anybody that wasn't here, if you have any modeling friends that don't know about this, we want to encourage you to share this video with them. I need you to help me reach, help us reach our, I need you to help us reach our like goal by clicking the like button so we can get 60 plus likes on episode two. I need you to leave a comment below so we can exceed that tough goal John said at getting 100 comments. And I also need you, as I asked you before, I need you to share this with your other modeling friends so we can exceed our goal of 250 views. And if you have not already, I want to encourage you to subscribe to this channel. You can go to School Kill River Valley and subscribe to John's channel if you have not already. And don't forget, if you haven't done this, you need to be subscribed and have the bell cl icon clicked over on BNSF 6951's channel so you can get alert for next week's premiere, next month's premiere. We had a great time tonight, and we hope you did too. So we're going to let you all go now and head over to Sparky, because that's where I'm headed. We really appreciate you guys that showed up here to chat with us yeah. during the premiere.